Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Behind the Group podcast. I am DJ Keel. And I am Basil Barrington, and we are back. Today, we are going to review the mm-hmm. director's cuts of Rebel Moon Part 1 and 2. Now, we saw both 1 and 2, and we reviewed it. We both thought that this was a, a serious film. I mean, this is a, a great sort of franchise for Netflix to yes. get into. A good starting point for a a new franchise. It really is, isn't it? Um, Yeah, yeah. So, you know, they released the uh, director's cut. What's interesting about this here is Zack Snyder and Netflix, regardless of it being a director's cut or whatever, but they Mm -hmm. released four movies in less than a year. Yeah, basically. (laughs) Yeah, basically. It's four movies. Four movies in less than a year. You have to count it as four movies. Yeah. Because there is... Especially the first one. Like, you could say the second movie is, like, extra scenes and more violence, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. The first movie is a completely different movie. <laughs> the different intentions. Mm-hmm. There's, it, like, just different motivations. Like, it, it felt different. It's a completely different vibe. The first movie is crazy, how how you wove that together. And they reshot. Because he, he didn't just cut the movie different they reshot scenes yeah where they shot different versions of scenes so they're seeing different lines <laughs> for this version of the movie and like yeah there was one part in the when they get to the the farm and this guy's talking about smashing everybody that, that's not in the first movie <laughs> like you can tell the lines are different <laughs> yo they you curse know, the, more it's a bunch of stuff the the other thing is the scar giver she's she's getting it in a, a lot more too you know what i'm saying yeah, she's yeah, like, yeah. She's, she's, <laughs> she's a bit more aggressive with that too. She's like, uh-uh, no, I want no, no, stop all this foreplay. This is what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? She's like, get it in. And then the second guy, the second guy, she smashed. Did that happen mm-hmm. like in the original part one? Yeah, yeah it, did, it did, but it was like, no, the first guy she smashed isn't in the first movie. Okay, okay. The second guy is. Okay, wow. All right. Yeah, yeah. they cut they cut that out completely. But I'm yeah. saying like. The motivations and stuff like um for uh who's the girl who's the Korean girl in there? Um Oh um Nemesis. Nemesis, right? Mm-hmm. Her motivations are completely different. Yeah. <laughs> when she's fighting the spider chick, that's completely different. Yeah. So like there's there's a bunch of part like it's worth watching. Like it's worth checking it out. But it feels like it, it feels more like a, a mini series than than a movie. I think it's the best way to describe it. Like if you if it's too long, watch in the sections. But it's yeah. worth watching for sure. I think so. Like I the, think um I, I think let me ask you this here. Did the director's <coughs> cut look different in terms of um visually, CGI, everything else? Do you think it was brighter or like dimmer or was it different? What do you think? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I didn't compare the two of them together, but mm-hmm. like Cause, because there's more effects in the, the extended cut. Like, because there's a lot of scenes that aren't in the first movie, the PG-13 yeah. version. So uh, it does look different for sure. But I, I never put two of them together. I just assumed it was the same. But visually, like, as far as, as, far as special effects, like, especially, like, the blood and whatever, that that is completely different. Yeah. When people get shot, they get shot. <clears throat> and I like... I, I didn't, I don't, well, I never said it in the uh, first version, but like the way the guns, because it's basically shooting like some kind of plasma and you disintegrate, like, right. that is cool, man. That's pretty that cool. Looks, yeah. Mm-hmm. Just what I'm saying, like, it's for style, like, for style, stylization, whatever, how it looks, like, all that stuff looks cool. And then it means getting shot is far more important than it is before in in other movies yeah. you know with bullet regular bullets or lasers or whatever gang yeah. shots a problem for you <laughs> you're gonna lose your whole arm <laughs> and half then, your body like <laughs> and then, you don't can't let it, block it you ain't no, gonna be like i'm gonna hide don't let it bush, be like, one of yo. those semi-automatic joints you know because right? i was like damn she had a machine gun she had a plasma machine a plasma machine gun yeah, and i was like wow this joint is crazy lighting people up man there was definitely <laughs> more blood in these director cuts Definitely, oh, way more blood. <laughs> you know, I mean, the way they were bashing in heads with the cane, I was just like, "Wow!" I didn't listen. Bro. I didn't. So, so Bro. check this out. We always talk about the 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 first ten, right, dude? Mm-hmm. On yeah, direct yeah. on a uh, on part one director's cut, I when when I looked at the time, that it was, was it was the first twenty five, <laughs> not the first. Yeah, 10. yeah. No, this was thirty. That first that first invasion thing. Yeah, that they show. that's the first. That was. 
Come on, Dude, you know that was raw as yeah. hell, man. And, <laughs> I was this is the thing. I saw this. I, I started watching it on the train because I, I watch it when I'm on my way home from work sometimes. Mm -hmm. And bro, I was in my chair like, oh snap, oh snap, like. Yeah. <laughs> And I was just seeing it all, for the whole 30 minute ride home. I was like, oh, this is crazy. This is crazy. Yeah, like man. that, that storyline, like I, I would like more of that storyline. If yeah. there's anything left to tell about that family and what happened to everybody, like that whole thing was crazy to me. And it shows you, cause I, I guess it, it's showing you how evil this noble guy is. And like, you yeah. know, like you're looking at him like, oh, he's a bad guy. Like. Yeah. Does it, how do you make your son kill your father? Like, girl, that's crazy. That yeah. is crazy. You know, and I, I always say this about villains, right? And um, mm -hmm. there needs to be like a villain, a villain's manual, right? Because yeah. you know, this villain in um, Rebel One, it, it was just mm -hmm. ridiculous. I mean, dude, you are mm -hmm. the mother world, and you went up against a farming community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, when when I see so the movie, I love like part one and part two, even the director's cut, right? But when you mm -hmm. have a villain like that, I mean, that's just like, I mean, okay, you're a villain. I know you're not supposed to have compassion, but it's a farming mm -hmm. village, dude. They have nothing. You didn't even want the grain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, but 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 I think it's a it's a lesson in hubris and underestimating your your enemy. Because mm -hmm. look, this guy was smashing planets. And he gets his farming plan and he didn't even take anybody seriously where he should have. Right. And that's the problem with him. Well, I, also, he didn't know who was there initially. Well, yeah. actually, he did know in the director's cut, he did know who was there. Yeah. But mm -hmm. uh, he, uh, he is hubris. He didn't take it serious because he had, you know, he had the big, the big uh, spaceship, whatever that, that blows up planets. Like the dreadnought. They, they were that on that. The dreadnought. The dreadnought. Ooh. Yeah, the was it the, the King's Gaze or whatever? Something that like that, that joint. <laughs> that that spaceship was spicy, man. Now speaking of that ship, kind of saw mm -hmm. this, and um, you saw a little bit of it in part one, but in part two, the yeah. engine in this dreadnought is. I have so many questions, man. <laughs> so it's run by a, I guess, a statue of a person who has. No, it's a, it's a conquered alien mm -hmm. that they. They glued into the spaceship and connected to the spaceship, and they're using the alien to power this thing. Whatever okay. power is coming out of alien. So check this out. I have out. so many questions. Man. Right, but the alien gave a really good gave us a really good idea of what like the next sequel is going to be. I need to see more of this alien. She man. said. She everything. said. She said the alien said, "Listen." It's okay. I forgive you. You can get rid of me. Mm -hmm. However, yeah, 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 when my sisters arise, it's gonna be yeah, a yeah. problem. Bro, this upset. I want to. I would like to see more. There's lots of stuff I want to see more of. Like I'm interested in all the stuff in this universe. There's a yeah. bunch of things. What's yeah, up, yeah. like I want to know how big the universe is. Yeah. Is it like Empire where they they got thousands of planets? Like how big is the thing? How far away are things? Yeah, because like they. He had the full space to get over to to save the the, the bad guy in the movie. Right. So like mm -hmm. how far? Because they they couldn't use it, so they had to fly there, and it took them a, a couple weeks to get there. And so like you know like so like just the little little things like how the whole world works, and like you know how many kings are there? Is there are you, can you form an alliance? Like all that stuff I want to know. There's a there's a bunch of things I want to know. Right. I would like to see more. And then you also got the princess who isn't dead, but she apparently has these powers. You alluded to the fact that, uh, you know, this mm. whole Netflix Zack Snyder sort of like um, partnership that directors yeah. should like be on notice. Why do you say that? Well, I, I think this is going to change the game for for movies from Netflix, because you mm -hmm. think about like this. These four is four movies. I, I don't care what anybody says. Regardless, you have to cut they, all four, they, you know? Yeah, no, it's four movies because he added like an hour and a half to the first movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the other movies like 40 it's minutes hour. extra yes, or whatever. Exactly. Like it's time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You shot four movies worth of content, right? right? Mm -hmm. So regardless though, if directors can go to Netflix and say, hey, I'll make a clean PG-13 version of whatever. And then you let me go balls to the wall, whatever I want in the second version, at least both of them same time. 
peace out. Like Netflix is going to say yes to that. Mm-hmm. And why <laughs> wouldn't they, if they can get their version so they can get families to watch and everyone watch Netflix and then we can get our R rated version. Whereas, you know, blood and guts or whatever, like, why wouldn't they do that? This seems like it worked in my opinion. It seems like it's a hit. Yeah. I want to no, hear I'm saying like they, there's a bit of controversy because mm-hmm. these two four hour long movies didn't quite make it into the top 10, but I mean, technically they, they did, but it's not like a number one hit or whatever, but there, there, it's two four hour, four hour long movies. Yeah. <laughs> and the other thing is like a director's cut isn't, you know, supposed to like win an Academy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, no, no. The director's cut is not for everybody. So not, right. not everyone's going to sit through it. Yeah. So to expect everyone to sit through it the same way they did the PG-13 version doesn't make any sense. Yeah, no. Nah, like, why would you? Why would you? Yeah, because I watched this joint. I broke it up into days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, like, I had to, too. Like, I, the first day I did a wedding, I DJed a wedding. Mm-hmm. I got home, like, 3 o'clock in the morning, and I started watching. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. <laughs> I as anything. I went to sleep. The sun was up. And I was like, I can't finish this, man. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to finish it, but I couldn't. In one setting, I couldn't. And I just, I had to split it up. But like, which is fair. Like, it's fine. You can continue from Netflix. So, I mean, it, that's fine. It's not a big deal. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I didn't see a problem with it. I, I, I don't know. And, yeah. and I think, too, like, it felt like a, a long mini series. Like, it, 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 it was, felt like. Yeah. Right? It's yeah, got like a it's, TV show kind of vibe. Plus especially movie. part two. Part two felt like, uh, you know, part one, they just got into it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. part one just goes. It, it flows a lot. But, but part two felt like a mini series. But Joe, check this out, right? So I um, so even part two, I watched um, over two days, right? And so I watched mm-hmm. the first like um, hour and a half, right? Mm-hmm. And then when I came back to watch the next day to watch it, Yo, there was an action scene for the rest of the one hour left in the movie. So there was a one hour action scene. You're not breaking that up. Until the (laughs) end. So we look at stuff and we're like, oh, they gave us the action in the last episode and it was only 10 minutes. They gave us action for like one hour in this joint, right? You said something really interesting. um, I didn't even know this. You said, um, okay, so this, this film is beautiful. CGI, Mm. visual effects. I mean, everything is a hundred, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's and crazy. you said yeah. that this joint Netflix gave Zack Snyder a hundred and eighty million dollars to shoot everything. Yeah, in total. In total. Plus special in total. effects for everything. Total. Okay. So you got... <laughs> Dude. No, no, because it, it doesn't wow. feel like this is the budget. <laughs> the no. budget feels like more. No. Because this... it is a thing. Yes, Whether you like or hate Zack Snyder, you think he's a, a hack, he's a terrible director, whatever, there is no denying this guy's visual skills are unparalleled. Mm-hmm. I don't know any other director mm-hmm. you could look to and be like, oh, that guy's on Zack Snyder's level mm-hmm. doing special effects. I don't know anybody. Maybe, I, um, <laughs> you know, George Lucas is pretty good with special effects, but he's a lot older. Yeah, too. I mean, like, you got to mm-hmm. go, we got to go outside of current day right. directors yeah. and stuff like no. that. Mm-hmm. Like, Dene, Vanel, whatever his name is, the, the Dune, maybe. Yeah. But That's in cool. general, mm-hmm. he, he doesn't have a lot of equals as far as special effects. And this is, this is a tour de France of special effects here. This is the the pinnacle, the Grand awesome. Prix level of special effects. Man, it like looks the so stuff great. that they did. Because mm-hmm. you think about it, right? He did a PG thirteen version of this movie so that people get shot and it looks fine. And he is the R rated version of the same thing where people's eyeballs are floating in the air as you see <laughs> it getting shot. Like, bro, dude, you know what I'm saying? You did. You had to do mm. the special effects twice. Yeah, yeah. There's people struggle making one version of special effect. This guy did special effects twice. A hundred and eighty million dollars. Ring of that's uh, it. That's the all ring he of had. power was. I think Amazon paid a quarter of a billion dollars for that. Um, yeah. Ju- uh, Jupiter's legacy was a hundred and thirty million dollars for ten episodes. Corny. Yeah, but see, um, you know, there's a bunch of movies that are in theaters that cost like um the the new Falcon or Captain Captain America movie. Mm-hmm. They I think they spent close to four hundred million dollars on that movie. See, that's crazy. Because they, they did the reshoots and all this other stuff. No, like so, mm-hmm. no. like in total, 
it's close to four hundred million dollars they spent in total for that movie. That movie <laughs> has to make like one point five billion to get his money back. But anyways, we're getting off yeah. topic. Yeah. The yeah. fact is, mm-hmm. one a movie that they million. spent mm-hmm. four hundred million dollars on looks like a Disney Plus movie. That's it. Where there's a guy who who this is basically he did this for fun rather than like he needs to or this is like his his entire career is on the line this guy did this as a joke like what the hell let's see if we can make two two r-rated movies and two pg-13 the pg if you put the scenes together for the pg-13 version the r-rated version you had to do double the special effects because you got to yeah. clean up all the blood and everything like that yeah and still make it look good it is and add in an extra <laughs> Two and a half hours, dude, for the extra scene. It, it defies logic. How special this guy is when it comes to effects. It defies. It's ridiculous. I mean, like I was saying, right? I'm into the first ten minutes of a film, right? But mm-hmm. watching the watching part one, I was thirty minutes in, and I was still getting action, dude. Yeah, the world building. <laughs> when the when the kid had to kill his father with the cane, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. That wasn't in the first, that wasn't in the PG version. No, no, it's not. That whole entire no. section is not in the PG exactly. version. Exactly. So they gave us like 20, 25 minutes of this new section, right? So it kind of yeah. took up the entire first part of the movie, mm-hmm. right? And I was yeah, like, yeah, wow. No, go ahead, go ahead. It, but it, you know what? Even like the worlds or the uh, the places that are on fire, the places that are going through like um, everything like, looks different. It, it doesn't it looks, look like it. You yeah, did it, you know, but, G- but it looks chat GBT. so good. I mean, like, listen, is this okay? So we know when Netflix came out mm-hmm. with House of Cards, that was it. Nef- mm-hmm. Netflix is its uh, trajectory was boom up here, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and we also know that the Japanese, the South Koreans, and the Chinese mm-hmm. did a really good sci-fi flick as well. Um, but I only saw one sort of Chinese flick. But the Japanese mm-hmm. and the South Koreans, they do sci-fi really well because they've been doing it for a really long time. And they actually create yeah. they actually create things that have happened before they happen mm-hmm. or or that will happen. But mm-hmm. hasn't happened, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so yeah. we know that we know that the Japanese and the South Koreans they do sci-fi really well. When you look at Netflix, right? You know they mm-hmm. do they do fantasy really well. They do you know like um, um, anime really well, right? But in terms of mm-hmm. sci-fi, American sci-fi, like you said, these American mm-hmm. directors are put on notice because Zack Snyder took 180 million dollars and created four films. <laughs> It's and delivered epic. them within it and delivered them within a year. There isn't yeah. anything that we've seen. Mm-hmm. I, I'm just okay, so let me just say this in my opinion. Every since mm-hmm. we've been doing the Behind the Groove podcast and looking at sci-fi on Netflix, right? American mm-hmm. sci-fi. Nothing is I've never seen anything this epic in terms of American sci-fi on Netflix. No, no. Maybe, I haven't seen Not everything, obviously, you know, but I haven't seen anything this epic. You? No, no, I haven't. I haven't. Like, yeah. <laughs> like you, you got to talk because you're building, you're doing the world building from scratch, completely mm-hmm. from scratch. So you got to get people involved and be like, okay, I like this. this is interesting. I'll watch the rest of it. So like you got to think about how talented you have to be to create a brand new universe from scratch. Mm-hmm. Yep. Explain how the universe works. <laughs> Get you invested in the universe and then watch it for 16 hours, wherever it is. Like, <laughs> dude, it's a lot. It's a tall order. But you know what? So, we're about to get this, like, this weather, this rain coming in from Florida from the hurricane, right? And we're supposed to get mm-hmm. it for like four days. Mm-hmm. All four movies would be great to watch yeah, yeah, yeah. in a snowstorm yeah. or a rainstorm or something like that. Definitely on a mm-hmm. weekend. If it's raining on a Friday and I'm, you know, I was going to go out with some boys or whatever, right? You know, my crew, I'm not going out, you know, Saturday I'm in, Sunday I'm in. It's yeah, all yeah, raining, yeah. you know? So I'm just like yeah, watching. Yeah. And, and that's what I do, like, when it's raining or when I'm not, it's too, like, for instance, um, mm-hmm. we've been in this heat dome. So it's tough to mm-hmm. go outside. It's too hot, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just too hot, dude. I mean, you open a door and it's like, it's crazy. So... A lot of people in America stay in during this heat dome, right? 
like mm-hmm. I do, right? So I'm just like the weekend. That's when I like watch stuff. That's when I like bubble up on things um, that I watched before. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, man, f- uh, um, again, $180 million, four films, two PG versions, and two R versions, dude. <laughs> no one is doing that. No one is doing that. Who's doing that? I, Any- I don't think anyone's ever done this before. Okay, how about someone? And, and you, you, you watch a lot. Okay, you, you, you've you been into this for a long time, longer than me, right? Yeah. Outside yeah. of Netflix, is anyone doing this? No, no, no one's ever done this before. That made an R-rated version of a PG thirteen person yeah. th- movie, PG thirteen mm-hmm. version movie. Yeah. No one's ever done it before, and not like this. Yeah, and then give you the both versions, so yeah, you can watch this with your family. It's fine. It's a right. regular movie, and then like, oh, holy crap! I can't believe they put this on Netflix, kind of thing, for the because basically this movie is. Remember the the comic book the heavy metal? Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is this is that thing of a heavy metal, yeah. you know, kind of story that would be in the saw comic the book. movie this too. Exactly the this. movie was wild. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's, that, uh, it's got that energy and that vibe of it of like a throwback to what nineteen eighty something. Yeah. But like just with current day graphics and this is but like, like it, you know Netflix. Fun. It, yeah, it was definitely fun. Netflix knows when it has mm-hmm. a winner. <clears throat> I was reading up where they um they're shooting Extraction Three. It's mm-hmm. Extraction is a winner. It's a winner. It's yeah, the, um, yeah. It's it's um the net it's Netflix James Bond basically. It's a winner. You know this. I mean, and it's then, a dope movie. Like that's I like a, that. <laughs> do I mean we both love one and two. Now and they're coming out with three. That that's a great film. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, Idris Elba is going to be in um, three, but mm-hmm. with this Rebel Moon, man, I think Netflix has a winner here, dude. Because in mm-hmm. Rebel Moon, I mean, when we first started watching this, I was like, "Oh, you know what? I got to turn all the lights off dude, <laughs> because this joint needs to get to into be, it. I need to get into it because it looks." Mm-hmm. This movie looks so good. I mean, like I said, the CG, the visuals. The uh, character mm-hmm. building, the uh, the story arc. I mean, dude, we only this is only part one and two. Yeah, I, I the more, the rest of the story, like, cause they got to go find the the princess now. Yeah, like I want to know what's gonna happen, man. Like, you're and, gonna get, and then you got the you alien, the, the armies, alien the giant woman. The yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I I need to know more, right? <laughs> I want to know more. Mm-hmm. I'm excited by this thing. Like, it's something interesting. And I like that it's not Star Wars. It's not a continuation of some other IP mm-hmm. from 1980 something that everybody knows. Like I like that it's brand new and it's doing its own thing because you're not you're not tied down to the rules of whatever movie from before yeah. or whatever the universe is from before. So like that that to me alone makes me excited about it because you can do whatever you want. And you don't have to explain yourself. Like, it's, right. it's a different universe. Don't worry about it. You know, I'm glad you brought up Star Wars because as I was watching, even when I was watching the PG versions and now I'm watching the R versions, I was like, I, mm-hmm. I always, watching Rebel Moon, I always think about Star Wars and I'm just like, okay, Star Wars, when Star Wars came out, phenomenal, right? But then mm-hmm. as the yeah. years, the decades go, went on. It's got trash or and, and you look at <laughs> And you look at these new films, right? Or, or, and or these new shows, right? It's just like, there is absolutely nothing different. People still are yeah. using lightsabers. They're still running around on sand. You know, it's nothing different. There's no like interesting <laughs> stories, right? And then no, but, but that, that, the, the problem is the creative mm-hmm. people are not in Star Wars right now. Right. Uh, they need Star Wars needs its creator. <laughs> you know, um yeah. George Lucas, yeah. you know. But then Zack Snyder says, and you said this, right? You said um he he was mm-hmm. trying to sell it to um, yeah, yeah, he was trying to pitch uh, George a Lucas, Star Wars right? version of this yeah, to Star right. Wars. And they're like, it's too much. Like, yeah, they're mm-hmm. like, it's too much. So he was like, yo, I'm going to take this 180. I'm going to do two PG versions and two R versions, dude. Mm-hmm. This guy, I mean. No, I think it's brilliant. I don't I don't mm-hmm. understand why anybody would hate this. This is a genius idea. I mean. Like, if I could just watch the R version, I'll do mm-hmm. that. Like, <laughs> well, When care, you like... say people are hating, we're going to zip this up really soon. But when you say people are hating. Are they hating the fact that he released the director's cut or the the director's cut they thought sucked? No, no, they're they're upset that he released the director's cut. Oh, like that's dude, like, go, 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 go to sleep. Go to sleep. 
bro mm. don't watch it or watch it it doesn't matter like, go lay TV. down go have you some ice cream have you some milk because that's just right? a silly like, thing to say dumb like we're dealing yeah. with stupid people like I, I the logic to me doesn't make any sense yeah. like the, you mm. you're getting this stuff like you're pay, you pay your 20 dollars to netflix wherever it costs and you're getting free content basically for the re- outside of once you pay your money and you get your whatever you paid for out of it, everything else is basically free for you. Enjoy your free movies and don't watch your free movies. Here, <laughs> it's here's, fine. The, here's the dumbest thing about people. Uh, here's the dumbest thing in terms of that statement, right? Mm-hmm. So you're okay with the edited version of this person's creativity. This mm-hmm. Zack Snyder said, you know what? Hey, folks, I'm going to give you how I thought the movie should have been released. He ge- That's what he gave yeah. us. No, because Netflix right? wanted the PG-13 version. And he was like, well, what if we do both? And they're like, okay. So, like, I, nobody loses. Like, hey, yeah. I don't, I, the argument makes no sense to me. If you don't want to watch the PG, watch the R version. If you don't want to watch the mm-hmm. R version, watch the PG. Everything, everybody wins. Yeah, like the art, the entire argument makes no sense to me. Like, get, get what you want. If you don't want to watch either version, that's cool too. Like, I don't. Mm-hmm. Everybody's up in arms about Zach, and it, it seems so dumb to me. Yes, yeah, like people it's just like, pe- it's more being petty than yeah. Than, than it's like squishy reason. buttons on DJ controllers, really. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really? Like, the squishy button, the really? Like, come on, That's what you're complaining about? <laughs> go lay down. Go have you some warm yeah. milk. Go have you some ice right? cream. Go back in the basement. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's dumb stuff, right? Let me ask yeah, you this, and we're going to get up out of here. So the yeah. next release, do you think it's going to be mm. a PG or an R version? The first, the, the, the next, the third, part three, PG version what or I R hope, version? What, what I hope? What do you think? Hope is that they what release hope? both at the same time. Oh, I you want mean them like to release both at the same time? Really? Yeah, PG thirteen, well, and then you got to dig deep into the menu and go to the R version. That's fine too. I don't care how they do it. Put put them both out at the same time. But they may be cannibalizing themselves because, it, like, if you put them out at the same time, then you you may have people who, you know, what I'm saying It's just like everyone watched right, the well, PG version because we'll it came it, out first. We'll, we'll do it two weeks later. Then yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying like, but. Either way, when you know, because mm-hmm. two weeks the, the the hype dies down and people move, watch whatever is out. So what, put it out two weeks later, three yeah. weeks later. But like, I don't want six months too long. Yeah, get the get the sucker out two weeks. Because I I was actually looking for when I saw part one. I saw part. I went to the theater for part one. Mm-hmm. They did a sl- a limited release at, at this art house theater, and I, I saw it in part one. That was in December. Wow. That's how long ago it was. Yeah. <laughs> So like yeah, no man, they put it out at least okay a couple weeks later. Then yeah, part two out. I like the oh, R version, version because the R version is like just the um, the brutality of like Dude, this world, crazy. like the mother world and everything else. And I'm just like, yeah. And so yeah. we know that mm. things are gonna. <laughs> it's a lot going on here, man. They, he has a lot of different avenues he yeah, can go down. He's got a lot of stuff to work and with here. This like, is as far Netflix, as story. It's interesting. Yeah. Netflix has a winner, man. So listen, we are talking about Rebel Moon Part 1 mm-hmm. and Part 2, Director's Cut. Do you mm-hmm. want to just give like a, an overall rating of the Director's Cut? Oh, for me, the Director's Cut is like a 9.9 out of 10. Like, mm-hmm. it, it is a completely different movie. The first, first movie is a completely different movie. Yeah. And then Part 2 is more violence and gore mm-hmm. added to the second movie that's the that's the best way i describe it so like if you're looking for a reason to watch it part one is a completely different movie it feels different there's different motivations for different the different scenes cut there's a bunch of stuff and then part two they ratcheted up the gore and violence and the war mm-hmm. up to like 20. on a scale of one to ten they went it up to 20. that's how high yeah. they went up so it, it is nuts to me, but like I, I, I like both. I would love to watch that on an IMAX or something crazy. I think that would be insane. Or uh, a IMAX really good, or a really good um, iPad 
M4, which is how I watched it. <laughs> and it came through. It, it came through. That's fair, too. It came through. I watched part of this on my phone, man, and I can't. Yo, <laughs> Thank you, Apple. Is, <laughs> you know, um, I'm giving this joint um, part one and two, the director's cut a 10. I gave like one and two, like the PG version a 10. I'm giving mm. this a 10. I think that um, with the director's cut and just the brutality, the the killing, the it blood, feels everything else. It different, man. It, it felt different. I'm like, oh, this is serious now. You know, this here yeah, is serious. Yeah, like it's the, I, the intensity, yeah, everything. It feels different. I think I like the R version better because, you know, mm. I don't know how to say this, but the, the, the blood gave it like some... You know, it gave it some adds bounce. to the you know intensity of like how you're watching it. Like, you're like the, <clears throat> the stakes are like high, but yeah. with the blood and gore, the stakes goes up higher. Like, yeah, like, oh, this shoot. was it's you totally can't get different shot. Film. Like, worry. Four different films, dude. We have four. I totally agree with that. Now that I'm thinking about it, four mm-hmm. different films. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, the yeah. director's cut. They just felt more. Um, they just felt. I mean, obviously they were hard, but. You know that mm-hmm. the way people were dying and just the killing and the, how the guns went off and everything else. Yeah, this is the ten like the, ro- the, the robot around. Jimmy. Like Jimmy has a whole Jimmy arc was in this hard, movie. dude. They Jimmy didn't give us a hard. story we, like the in, in, they didn't give us a story in like the 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 PG version. But I'm no, like, no, okay. it, it was like basic. Like yeah. Jimmy's there. We got the whole joint now. Like, exactly. Jimmy went hard in the paint when it came time to the battle. I was like, dude, oh, snap. They did not There's show that. The they did not show that in the PG version. No, they did and not. See, <laughs> and see, check this out, right? Uh, and I know, see, we're just yeah. like going down a rabbit hole now. But check this out. So <laughs> Jimmy, like in the mm-hmm. director's cut, Jimmy now mm-hmm. has fans. Yes. You know? Yeah. Just how absolutely. he came out there with the cape on and was just like, bang. I mean, he had a cape on, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. He was bat- Jimmy was Batman. I'll put it Jimmy like Jimmy got That's, it he, off, dude. He, he has a shot. story. Now I want to know. I mean, because he said, like, well, if the queen is alive, if the princess is alive, it's my duty to protect her. So we know. Yeah. That something's going to kick in. You know, one of those AI is going to kick in. He's going to become a killer machine. It's going to be crazy. Bro, I'm ready so, to go, man. Because all the lights came on. I was like, oh, snap. It's ready. It's, it's ready to, to go. go. Now. <laughs> so we are talking about, again, Rebel Moon Parts 1 and 2, the director's cut. Mm. Keo gave this a 9.9999. Yeah, yeah. I gave it Easy. a 10. I mean, <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> Um, uh, but okay, why the nine point <laughs> nine? I'm annoyed that I had to wait six months to watch this. Oh, okay, it's the time I in between. Okay, but hey, you know what? It, check it, it out. It came out earlier. But check it out. Maybe I can change your mind because listen, we're getting the uh, the ring of the rings of power two years later. You know, <laughs> so fair I enough. Mean, fair you enough. know, I mean, we got listen, we got um invincible. How they just cut us off like at the fourth episode and then. Didn't tell us anything. Didn't say nothing. Yeah. Didn't say nothing. So you got, a, like, <laughs> you got a sequel in six yeah. months. How often does that happen? I mean, it, that's unprecedented. Like, if you, with the business side of that, that's unprecedented. It doesn't and happen. Netflix is winning for that. But like, it doesn't happen. So can we get I didn't that point? I want to wait, man. Can we get that point one? Of, put it over at yeah, the no, I, Okay, I'll, I'll give it a 10. But like, there here's, we go. here's what I want. <laughs> For for three and four for mm-hmm. for the next version of Rebel Moon, I want a theater version, the whatever Ooh. the PG thirteen version. I wanted I want that to be in the theater. IMAX IMAX theater, IMAX mm-hmm. short a short run, mm-hmm. do a couple weeks and then you don't have to do a wide release, but like a couple weeks from mm-hmm. Netflix, which they have done before, and then I will want both versions, the R and the PG thirteen, to come out in a shorter version. The six months too long. Yeah. I know they're doing the special effects and yada yada, yada but like six months too long. Yeah, get, get get trim that down. You can you can do it. Zach could do it. <laughs> yeah, this was uh this was great. So our new rating, mm. Keo gave it a ten, and I also gave this it a did. ten. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's a reluctant ten. There we go. <laughs> All righty. Well, there you have it. Thanks for checking out another episode of the Behind the Groove podcast. I am Basil Barrington. I am DJ Keo. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And until next time, peace. All right.